Hello, this is the Dispensation of God channel. Uh, my name is Stephen. Today we're going to be talking about salt covenants, salvation, and being cleansed and preserved through Yeshua, through the Word of God, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And as usual, we have a lot of uh, scripture to get through today, and so we're just going to begin because we only have 15 minutes here with this new channel. Uh, we're going to start uh, in Mark chapter 9, verses 47 and 50. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. For every one shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its sal saltiness, wherewith will you season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. And uh, we're going to move on here to Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And uh, here we see that we are to keep our bodies as a living sacrifice. And there are two um, main themes that are, that are going to present themselves in this teaching. Uh, the first being that we are uh, to remain a sacrifice unto the Lord. Um, and the other, uh, that this is part of our priestly calling, is we are called to be kings and priests. We covered that, I believe, yesterday. Um, but we'll highlight that again. Um, as a living sacrifice, uh, sacrifices and instruments of God go through a consecration. Uh, to be consecrated um, is to be made sacred, um, like bread uh, and wine um, that's declared or or presented in the body of Christ. And uh, to be consecrated is is to be made divine. And so we can't do that in of ourselves. That is uh, only something that the Holy Spirit can do. And this gift that we were given, um, hidden in the mystery of Christ, whereby we receive and live in the Holy Spirit once our uh, flesh um, has died, um, it is that process of, of being made perfect. Um, that is the, the saving uh, grace that, that we're given through Yeshua. Um, and we're going to see this. We're, we're going to jump here back to Numbers 18. We're going to read from verses 1 through 6, and then we're going to read verse 19. And um, we'll just start here. And the Lord said unto Aaron, Thou and thy sons and thy father's house, and thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. And thou and thy sons and thee shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. And thy brethren also of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of thy father, bring thou with me with thee, and they may be joined unto thee, and minister unto thee, that thou and thy sons with thee shall minister before the tabernacle of witness, and they shall keep thy charge, and the charge of all the tabernacle. Only they shall not come near the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar, that neither they nor ye also die. And they shall be joined unto thee, and keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation for all of the service of the tabernacle. And a stranger shall not come nigh unto you, and ye shall keep the charge of the sanctuary and of the altar, that there be no wrath any more upon the children of Israel. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levites, from among the children of Israel, 
to you, they are given as a gift for the Lord to do the service of the tabernacle of the con of the congregation. So the, uh, the Levites were given as a gift and, um, and a, a sacrifice as well. And um, as such, they had to receive sus uh, sustenance because they were not given land um, to live off of the increase that the Lord had provided in the land that he provided them like the other tribes. So verse uh, 19, um, all the heave offerings of the holy things, which the children of Israel offer unto the Lord, have I given thee and thy sons and thy daughters with thee by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord unto thee and unto thy seed with thee. And uh, salt um, has both um, a cleansing and a uh, preservation quality to it. And uh, we'll, we'll read about that a little more. Now, I want to mention heave offerings really quickly. Uh, the difference between a wave and a heave offering is a wave offering is something that is whole and a heave offering is like uh, part of part of something um, and it was represented a number of different things throughout the bible um, like uh, a complete um, wave offering uh, in an animal part was like the breasts um, where one shoulder was presented and that was considered a heave offering because it was only part of the um, shoulders, it was the right shoulder. And it, it, it signified um, the strength to carry um, forth. And, and um, anyway, you can, you can research uh, the difference between those is pretty interesting. Um, and so we see that um, and if you read the whole book of uh, Numbers 18, um, it, it kind of uh, describes a lot about how the Lord sustains the priesthood. Um, so I would encourage you to do that. Those, those were the uh, relevant uh, scriptures that we're going to go through. But now we're going to jump back to Matthew 5, verses 13 through 18. Uh, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savour, wherewith, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And uh, going back to the salt, uh, this section starts off, uh, saying we are the salt of the earth, but if salt have lost its war, wherewith shall it be salted? And it ends in, in talking uh, about the law. And um, where the Holy Spirit, uh, whenever we accept Christ, remember, uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That speaks of the salting. And so uh, when we go through the sanctification process and we're made... Um, clean um, and we're to remain in the spirit we have to um, abide uh, abide by his commandments which the law is part commandment and part judgment but we're not reserved for judgment so, um, we will move on here to second chronicles 13 we're gonna uh, cover verses 5 and then 10 through 12 ought ye know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever. And, excuse me, even to him and his sons by a covenant of salt. So this was um, referencing Jesus and, and it's referencing the covenant that we have through Christ. 
first covenant was made to Israel. It's a salt covenant. It's a covenant forever uh, to Israel and to Judah. But through uh, David, um, Jesus, and through Jesus back uh, through Judah, as we'll see later. Um, verses 10 through 12. Uh, but as for us, the Lord is our God, and we shall have not forsake, and we shall have not forsaken Him. And the priests which minister unto the Lord are the sons of Aaron, and the Levites wait upon their business, and they burn unto the Lord every morning and every evening burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. The showbread also set they in order upon the pure table and the candlestick of gold with the lamps thereon to burn every evening. For we keep the charge of the Lord our God, that ye have forsaken him. And behold, God himself is with us for our captain and his priests with surrounding trumpets to cry alarm against you, O children of Israel. Fight ye not against the Lord God of your fathers, for ye shall not prosper. And this is um, a reference to our election as a royal priesthood. And so we're going to go into 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1-9. through 9. I'll try and get through this quickly. Uh, Wherefore, laying aside with all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. And if so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up to a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay a scion, a chief corner stone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that leads us to Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 through 13. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, that is us, people, <laughs> Uh, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they, uh, and they also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, and the Omega the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom of patience of Jesus Christ, was in the island, isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a... Uh, okay, we're, we're going to have to skip here and go to 12 because I have very little time. And I turned to see and a voice spoke with me and uh, being turned, I saw with golden candlesticks in the midst of the seven candlesticks was like unto, uh, one to the like unto the son of man clothed in a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. That's exactly what we saw back in Second Chronicles um, where it was uh, talking about the, the priest unto the Lord. So that's us. That's the second covenant. And if we um, are cleansed uh, with this salt and uh, remain salty, then we will be them. Thank you. God bless you. Goodbye.